Okay, so we're here with Holger at the Dope for Stand. Yeah, what have you got to show us today, man? Um, we've got to show the we we do show we don't have to the new 155 compact sequencer, or it's called mini analog sequencer. And this is a small 12 HP unit, um, which is. Here we are, running a small sequence of eight steps. You can, of course, disable steps, right? The usual stuff. Then you can choose running modes, like alternating or random or uh, up-down or doubling up-down steps. So. And you can also um, uh, switch switch off the first, uh, choose the first and the last step. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you can, for example, program ratchet ratcheting individually per step, like double. Oh, that's nice. Or uh, triple. I, I will I will now write it on the same steps. The last one always overwrites. It also works, you yeah, can do that. Um, uh, and uh, the settings for the running modes and, and all that can be stored in presets, but I don't know if that feature works yet. The hardware is finished, but the software is not completely finished yet. Awesome. Another uh, feature is that it can actually be uh, clocked relatively fast. What we're hearing now as the sound source is actually another sequencer, which acts as a, a graphic VCO now. Ah, sorry, should I turn it down? Okay, so you can... The output of the sequencer acting as a VCO is uh -huh. processed through the um, uh, filter and the VCA of a mini synthesizer now, just for the simplicity of it. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, we think this is quite a useful and fun little thing mm. and uh, should be released at some time in summer, but certainly not before June or Dieter, what do you think? Yeah. yeah probably um, July-ish. Um, we don't want to be too optimistic, but... Let's see. Okay, and um, what are the other parameters? What are the other parameters that you're able to control with the sequencer? Uh, what do you mean? What Sorry. What are the other elements that you're able to control within the sequencer? So, are th are these is this pitch representation here? Um, at the mo uh, uh, in this patch. Oh, this is just pitch, but it uh, the output is just a control voltage and a gate, like you would expect. It's essentially just a very compact analog sequencer. Okay. Um, uh, using the functions means you choose the f functionality you want to edit on the program with the program toggle switch. Mm -hmm. Then you've got a function button, like for example direction at the moment, which is printed here. Uh -huh. And you hold it and you choose it and that's fine. Um, same about first last step, which is so it's made to be a uh, relatively simple step forward if you want to program ratcheting you choose with this toggle switch again your ratcheting mode and you just press this and choose for the step excellent excellent and yeah do you have yeah do you have a rough idea of how much it will cost when it's available well at the moment it's projected to be uh, 180 euros recommended retail price including VAT um in silver and about 200 in uh, gold, I wanted to say, black. <laughs> Excellent. Great. Uh, and, uh, yeah. What else have you got? Sh have you got some other stuff to show for uh, us? Yes, we've got that little unsuspecting input module, which is actually just a little two-channel preamp uh, with some gain. It was designed to uh, introduce things like mobile phones or audio players with headphone outputs into the system and uh, um, amplify it to what's called modular level. Yeah, It excellent. does that and we found that it can actually do 
a couple of things more because it wasn't intended, but it also accepts piezo inputs. Is that too loud? So that's a kalimba with a piezo pickup. You could also plug in an electric guitar. It's probably not your boutique preamp, like, but it works quite well. And what it can also do, even with this signal, is then... Sorry, I'll turn down the volume. So, um, it turned out to be also a nice little universal preamp. Uh, could be used as a distortion unit. Yeah, that's Excellent. what you would... You could also, just for the simplicity of it, um, use an oscillator. I will have to turn this down. We're using the sine output of an A110. Where are we? Oh, it's already distorting. So it's this. And then you could go to... Yeah. All sorts of things. It does do all that. Which leads us to the next module, which is the fluctuation, fluctuating random voltages, which Dito will explain later. I'm just showing a bit of things like correlation parameter or uh, introducing glitches. But uh, mm -hmm. I think I'll hand it over to Dieter now. Excellent. Thank and you very much yes. for showing us those modules. Yeah. Okay, and now we're with Dieter. Ah, hello, guys from Sonic State. Glad to see you here. Uh, I will continue uh, a little bit uh, about what Holger started with the A1493. It's a module uh, inspired by the Buchler uh, fluctuating random uh, voltage. It's uh, very similar, but we added a lot of uh, features which uh, are not available at the original uh, design. Uh, first of all, we have three noise outputs. That's exactly the same as uh, in, in, in the original product with uh, three different flavors. And uh, the noise uh, is processed by some additional um, other sub-functions. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, um, the noise is used to uh, produce a so-called noisy triangle. That means that uh, the noise is uh, added into the circuit of a triangle uh, LFO and that way um, adds some kind of uh, unpredictability uh, to, to the triangle. Mm. And uh, this is the first uh, subunit. Oh, please, please stop. Please stop. Um, and uh, then we have a sample and hold which uh, follows the uh, so-called noisy triangle with an internal oscillator for the sample rate of, of, of the sample and hold. Oh, okay. And finally, we have a um, voltage-controlled uh, slow limiter, um, which uh, a is at the end of the signal path. So that's, uh, after all, it's uh, very similar to the original fluctuating random voltages, but we added all the in and outputs. In the original mod uh, module, you don't, you just have an output. I see. And uh, we said, okay, we ha you have access to the noisy triangle, you have access to the sample and hold uh, output, you can uh, override the internal um, LFO that triggers the um, the sample and hold. You can adjust the frequency of the triangle and much more. So, uh, after all, it's like the original plus uh, plus some uh, additional features. Especially, you have access to all the internal 
uh, sub-functions in the original. So that's the idea. And what would be uh, a kind of destination for this? Where would you send this kind of thing to? Well, what sort of effects? Uh, for any kind of noise or uh, random applications. You have a lot of parameters uh, where you can sh change. You can change uh, the, the frequency of, of the triangle. You can add uh, how much the noise affects uh, the, the, no the noisy triangle. You can adjust the frequency of the sample and hold. Um, you can uh, adjust uh, the, the slew limiter and so on. So it's, 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 it's a very complicated module. So it's a good idea to look at our website where it's uh, described in details yeah. with, with a lot of uh, additional information which uh, I cannot tell here. Okay, okay, great. And, and is this available now? Is uh, uh, it will be release? available hopefully this month or next. I hopefully it will come in end of May or maybe early in June. Okay. okay. And Do you um, have a rough price uh, in mind for uh, this one? And I don't think we got a price for that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this will be about uh, 250, 260, I'm not sure. This will be about uh, 65. Uh, the sequencer will be 180 in the silver version and about 200 in the vintage version, in the black version. Excellent. Thank and you very much. Uh, we have still another new module, which I can show you here. It's uh, a new version of uh, the ribbon controller. We already have a ribbon controller available since many years, but this is uh, an improved version because the, the old one was uh, very simple, had only very simple functions. So the new one, uh, which you he see here, that's the manual, and this one uh, is the, the controller module. So um, the main difference between the new and the uh, old one is that you have the possibility to quantize the outputs. So I will play on the manual to hear it. And now I have uh, a food switch in this application. When I uh, touch uh, the switch, it goes to continuous output. So now I play quantized and I press uh, the food switch. So while, while I'm playing, I can switch between quantized and non-quantized output. So this is uh, the main feature. That's you have uh, nine different uh, quantization possibilities, which uh, can be programmed uh, by the user. It's very easy uh, to program a quantization. You operate, you go into the uh, into the submenu for programming. Now I have an, an empty uh, input. I simply move the, f when you move the finger <laughs> over the manual, you see some kind of a cursor. Yeah. And when you press now, it turns on at this position the quantization. So by pressing the ribbon, right? Simply Amazing. by pressing the ribbon. So it's very, it's very easy to program your own your own quantization. Now you can store it and use it uh, after the uh, storing. Super. Now we go back to the performance mode. You simply uh, select one of the nine quantizations by operating uh, the corresponding button. It's very, very simple. And if you want to turn the quantization on and off at the module without the external food controller, you simply press the, oper uh, the button again. With the button again, you can turn on and off be between non-quantized and quantized. It's the same function as I showed you with the food the controller. Mm. You have uh, a lot of additional features you can adjust. For example, um, the range. Uh, of the manual in this now it's four octaves you can say it's five six seven octaves one octaves two octaves so it's up to you uh, to adjust uh, the range of the manual you can we have also uh, a pressure sensor in the manual which generates a second voltage which is simply controlled 
by the pressure applied uh, to the manual and we also have a second output a second gate output sorry uh, where you can adjust the threshold uh, as soon as uh, the pressure uh, increases a certain uh, value, a second gate uh, can be uh, generated. That means when you touch the keyboard or the manual, the first gate is uh, generated and if you operate uh, the pressure sensor, a second gate can be operated for, for another uh, event. It's, it's up to, for, for example, in, the, in this one you may use uh, a voltage control delayed LFO to add some kind of delayed modulation to the to the signal. Very well, nice. these are the most important features. And what sort features. of um, range have you got on the the pressure? Uh, the range can also be adjusted. So we have uh, in this manual. I see there is some kind of. In the config mode, let me see. You can adjust the the pressure of the th of the threshold, and you can also adjust. Oh, I, m I forget to mention, you can adjust the direction of the of the manual. Sometimes you will uh, have it uh, in in the other opposite ri high to low exactly, and uh, you can also uh, add an an offset voltage if you want some kind of transposition. The, the threshold pressure, pressure. You can turn read read trigger on or off, which can also uh, be controlled externally by a food controller. And yeah, these are the most important. It also has a, s a small MIDI interface in there. Oh you, uh, the the second um, input can be reconfigured as a simple MIDI output, but then uh, the second food controller can no longer be used. But uh, it's possible to adjust, for example, the MIDI channel and, and uh, very basic MIDI parameters. Mm. So it has also built an, uh, a very simple MIDI interface. So if you want to use it in your MIDI equipment. Thank yeah, you I think these are the important features. Yeah, thank you for showing us yeah. them. Are they, are they when will they be available? Um, the hardware is finished and we are still working on the, f on the software. I think it will come in... July, something like in summer this year, yeah, and right. the price should be for the for the module in the two hundred euro range, uh, together with the controller. I think it's about three hundred fifty, something like that. You will have to look at our website. I'm not sure about the prices. Okay, okay. well, thank you yeah. so much yeah. for showing them. Thank Peter. you for coming. Bye bye. Really appreciate. It.